In this video we're going to have a look at drawing the displacement diagram for one revolution of a cam but this time concentrating on uniform acceleration and retardation and how that construction works. So to start off with we need to have a look at just starting the displacement diagram and for that we're going to start off by checking our horizontal scale on our question and it says here that the horizontal scale is that every five millimeters must be equal to 20 degrees so we're going to go for go and work out how long our baseline must be and if our scale is supposed to be five millimeters to 20 degrees we're going to take our 360 degrees which is of course one revolution of our cam we're going to divide that by our 20 degrees which we got from here and that of course is going to give us a total of 18 and then we're going to take that 18 and multiply it by the distance that they gave us of so 5 millimeters for every 20 degrees which then gives us a total length of 90 millimeters for our displacement diagram so we're then going to go and draw out the baseline of our displacement diagram okay first is a construction line and then measure that out there's a dark line, 90 millimeters long. And then our next step, of course, is to go and break up that line into the 20 degree intervals. Wake okay, 5 millimeters for each. So we're just going to take a ruler and go and mark off 5 millimeter parts onto our baseline which is of course according to the scale that they've given to us they told us that for every five millimeters that's going to be 20 degrees so we can mark all of those points off there and then we're going to go and draw in our angles starting at zero degrees of course and going all the way to 360 so just try and make sure that you can clearly see each of the numbers that you write in there so that you have them as reference points mark those all off and we should end at 360 if we were correct and we do Okay, so we've got our displacement diagram's baseline broken up into our 18 parts and we've got it broken up into 5 millimeter parts and we've labeled them each going up in 20 degree intervals. Okay, so that's the start of our displacement diagram done. Now we're going to go back to our question and have a look at how the motion is supposed to work. So it says there that over the first 100 degrees the follower rises 62 millimeters with uniform motion. And we know that uniform motion is just a straight line. So we can immediately go and draw in a construction line going up from 100 degrees, which is where that first motion is supposed to end. So 100 degrees on our baseline, we draw a construction line going up. And then it says there that it's supposed to rise 62 millimeters. So we're going to go and mark off 62 millimeters on that construction line. And then we can go and draw in our first straight line starting from zero, going up to the top of that line as we've marked it off. That's the start of our movement. Okay, now we go back to our question, have a look at our next bullet point, and it says there that the follower then falls 20 millimeters with uniform motion, so a straight line again, over the next 50 degrees. So again we go to our baseline and we check 50 degrees okay so from there 100 degrees 50 degrees is going to be between 140 and 160 so we're going to have to go and find the center point between 140 and 160 mark that off and then draw a construction line going up and then we're going to have to go and drop this 20 millimeters down so we're going to take the top of the displacement diagram the maximum height that we at and then from there on that construction line we're going to measure 20 millimeters down to see where it was supposed to drop to and then we're going to go and draw in our next line 
Okay, so that is bullet point one and bullet point two, where over the first 100 degrees we went up to 62 millimeters. So there's our first 100 degrees, we went up 62 millimeters. And then for our second bullet point, the follower fell 20 millimeters down over the next 50 degrees. So we've got our 20 millimeters down over the next 50 degrees. Then if we go to the next bullet point, you can see it says there is a dwell period for the next 50 degrees. And a dwell period is just a fancy way of saying a rest period where your follower doesn't go up or down. So that's just a straight horizontal line for the next 50 degrees. So from 150, 50 degrees will be to 200. So we can go from 200 on our displacement diagram and go and draw a construction line going up. And it's a dwell or a rest so it's just a horizontal line going across like that okay once we're done with that line we then go back to our question again and now comes the important part to our acceleration and retardation the follower returns to its original position with uniform acceleration and retardation motion so we're going back down to where we started and we're finishing it off our motion, so from 200 to 3 to, through to 360 degrees. And we're going from that height all the way back down again. So now we're going to follow a set of steps which will help us to go and complete that simple harmonic mode, so that um, acceleration and retardation. Okay, and our first step there is to note the size of the movement and to block it off with construction lines. So we can clearly see that our movement on the horizontal is going to be between 200 and 360 degrees. So we're going to go and draw a construction line up from 360 degrees. And of course, the movement's going to start here. So we're going to draw another construction line across, which then creates the block in which our motion will happen. And now we've blocked our motion according to step one. So step one is now complete. We've blocked off the motion. And then for step two over there, we now have to go and check the number of parts of the the number of parts the base of the movement is broken into. Again, it must be an even number. So let's go and have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. Okay, so our baseline there for our movement is broken up into eight parts. That is an even number. If it wasn't an even number, according to our step two there. If it's not an even number, then you'd have to go break it up into an even number of parts. But thankfully, most of the time, it's always an even number of parts. Okay, then for step three, using the line break method, break one vertical side of the block up into the same amount of parts as the base. So we now know that the base is broken up into eight parts. So we now need to take either side here, okay, either of the two vertical sides of our block, and break it up into eight parts. And we say we use the line breakup method, which is where we simply go and draw a line out at any angle. Okay. And then we go and break that up into equal amount of parts, eight of them, which I'll do here simply using five millimeter gaps. And then we use our sliding set squares. To go and join that up, last part up, to the line that we're breaking up. And then we simply slide our set square down to draw parallel lines all the way across, which then breaks up our vertical line into a nice, neat eight parts. I've done this too quickly for you. I do have a video in my list of videos which shows you exactly how to do this if you've forgotten. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts. Oh hell. Nine parts. Ok, 
Okay, so breaking this up into eight equal parts, just our vertical line there, involves us using that method where we go and simply project a line out at any angle. And then we break it up into an equal amount of parts, into, into eight equal parts, just using our ruler. Okay, so I'm just going to mark that off eight parts. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight. And then using our sliding set squares, we join that last part to the top there of our line that we're breaking up. And then just slide that down to draw in our parallel lines, which then breaks our line up into eight equal parts, which of course matches the amount of parts that our, the base of our displacement diagram is broken into. Okay, if you can't remember how to do that, or if I was too quick with that, there is a video in my list of videos which shows you how to do that breakup. Okay, so that's broken up according to our third step. Okay, and now we're going on to our fourth step there, which then says find the center of the base of the block. Find the center of the base of the block and draw a vertical line up from it. Okay, there's the base of our block. The center, one, two, three, four points in, will give us the center, and we're going to draw a line going straight up. Okay, that completes that step. Okay, so that was step four. Now we're going to go to step five, and it says project the vertical break up onto this line. So there's our vertical break up over there. And we're going to go and project that vertical break up onto that line, and I'm just going to make a small little dash wherever that vertical break up hits into that center line that I drew. Mark each of those points. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so that is our step five done. So we've gone and projected the vertical breakup onto that center line. There was our vertical breakup, that's our center line, and now we've projected it across. Okay, then for step six, we have to go starting at the corner where the movement enters the block. We're going to join the corner to the first half of the points on the center line. And that looks like this. There's where our motion was meant to enter the block at the top there. And we're going to take that point and we're going to join it first to the first point that we've got on that center line. Then that same corner, we're going to join it to the second point. That same corner, we'll join it to the third point. And then that same corner, we're going to join it to the fourth point. And we're going to stop there. Only halfway down. Four points down, halfway down. Then, we're going to go to our next step, step seven, which says then that we have to then go and repeat this from where the movement should exit the block. So we're doing the same thing from where the movement should exit the block. So that's where the movement should exit the block, where it ends over there. And we're going to repeat the same thing, going and joining that corner onto that center line on the first part, onto the second part, onto the third part, and onto the fourth part. Okay, so that your construction looks like that. Then, we're going to go into step 8, and on step 8 it says that starting at the corner where the movement enters the block, mark the points on the line across one line, one up. Okay, we can't do that yet. Okay, there's one step that we've missed out on that set of steps there. We have to go and project each of these points that you've got here straight up into our block. Otherwise, we can't do that next step. We need all of these points projected up and into our block. Okay, now we can go from where our movement is supposed to start. We're going to go one line across and one line down and make our first point. One line across, one line down. One line across, one line down. One line across, one line down gets us to the center. Then again, we go one line across and one line down. 
one line across, one line down, one across, one down, and then we should enter where the movement is supposed to stop on the corner over there. And then our last step, okay, right at the end there, was to go and join these points using a French curve to complete the movement. So we get, take out our French curve, and again we're going to go and simply try and join those points as accurately as possible, okay, to get a nice clean curve which then shows off our movement and that's our halfway point which we then have to turn this around okay and then our last two points at the end there okay now be very careful not to do what I've just done there I missed out that last point there you must make sure that you don't do that you've always got to make sure that you hit every single point as you go through with your curve but that then completes your displacement diagram including acceleration and retardation at the end